drive down south to Tobacco Road and you'll find Chapel Hill where North Carolina seniors are winning and making them the fifth ranked team in the nation. Further down the road are the Duke Blue Devils at number 12 and just behind North Carolina in the ACC. The Blue Devils in Carolina, up next. Hello once again everyone and welcome to ESPN's NCAA basketball the second game of the day we move to the ACC Duke will face North Carolina Tar Heels 13 and 1 they've won 11 consecutive games they're 2 and 0 in the conference Duke 14 and 3 they have won four games in a row they are 3 and 1 in the conference we will have another game following this one after we step aside for sports and it will come back at midnight Eastern time BYU and Wyoming that one at midnight straight up let's get a couple of other scores from the ACC Virginia and Georgia Tech Tech simply rolls here 78 to 51 Kenny Anderson 21 points in the game North Carolina State loses at Wake Forest 97 76 Rodney Rogers 23 points and 15 rebounds and Temple all over Clemson in a non-conference game Mark Macon what a day 36 points eight three-pointers in the game the Owls at one point went on a 30 to 7 run in the second half so stay with us at halftime we will have scores and highlights of these and other games plus if anything happens in the Persian Gulf and the crisis there we will update Desert Storm so stay with us next we'll go to the ACC the North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the Blue Devils of Duke that one's coming your way in just a moment one big reason why you should be in church next week your children whatever their age is there's so much they can learn in church about life and love and positive values about families and faith and hope that only god can give so bring your children to church you might learn something too Duke Chapel on the campus of Duke University, Durham, North Carolina. All is quiet here as the shadows lengthen. While half a world away, there is anything but quiet and serenity as war in the Gulf continues to be of great concern to everyone. And although we are all troubled, we ask you to allow ESPN the opportunity to provide a brief respite from the tension and join us on campus at Duke University, a school that provides the kind of... It's John Carlson on the phone from Los Angeles. Carlson? He's from Apple Computer's ad agency. They want to do a commercial about us. Would we get to be in the commercial? No. Because we can't do it. Why not? Why not? Over the past 15 months, we've doubled our productivity. We've cut development time by a third. That's what I mean. I mean, why would we go on national TV and tell our competition exactly how we did it? presentation of NCAA basketball North Carolina versus Duke is brought to you by Honda maker of fine quality automobiles test drive a Honda at your local dealer today and by HBO simply the best Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham with its usual packed house of 9,314 to see one of the great rivalries in the game the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils. First, the starting lineup for North Carolina. King Rice has had some of his best games against Duke and has done particularly well in matchups with Bobby Hurley. Dean Smith now with 701 victories. If he would want to coach another seven years, he could catch the legendary Adolph Rupp for number one all time. For Duke, Christian Leitner is having a brilliant season. 20 points, 10 rebounds a game. He has already had 11 double-doubles. And Mike Krzyzewski, the winningest coach in Duke history in just his 11th year in Durham, he has taken his team to the Final Four four of the last five years. Mike, when you talk about a guy that has an interest in a Middle East crisis, Peter Chilcutt's brother, Michael, 
is stationed in the uh, Middle East in the Persian Gulf. He's in the U.S. Marine Corps, and Peter's been really, really hot lately. He's dedicated to heck of a football player for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, the mask he had had a helmet attached. <laughs> That's for all those wacky guys. Carolina's ball and a six-point lead. Alley-oop, and Chilcutt jams it through. Nice pass from Rice. That was a design play, and a rear screen created the opportunity for Chilcutt. And a great look by King Rice. The rear screen, the toughest screen to defend. Chilcutt, who averages nearly 13 a game, has four. Davis off balance. Gets it to Grant Hill. His shot won't fall. Duke is just ice cold, and they're down 18 to 10. It's got to be a great difficulty for Grant Hill to get a good look at the basket with that mask on. Fox. Got it. Tough shot, Rick Fox. And Dick, it strikes me that Carolina doing more one-on-one -on -one stuff tonight than I can remember. Well, you know, Rick Fox created making it a situation where they moved the ball three or four times. See, here's the versatility of Hill playing out on the point. At 6'7", he can play anywhere, really forced that shot. Oh, we've said that so many times tonight. I think the defense is creating the poor shot by forcing the players to go to angles that they don't want on the floor. Hill defensively at 6'7", now on King Rice, the point guard. North Carolina in their passing game, like the spread, get 15 feet apart. Passing going away. Oh, good baseline drive. Offensive foul. Let's see if the basket counts. Tremendous defensive play by Palmer rotating over to take that charge. No basket. 6.28 to go in the first half. North Carolina with a 10-point burst has a 20-12 lead. 28 to go in the first half. North Carolina leading Duke 20 to 12 after a 10 point run. And that's where we're located up here in the crow's nest. Uh, they're not going to have space for broadcasters downstairs and take away from the student seats. And you know what? Any place else I'd complain, but here it's so great you don't want to. Mike, I'll tell you why. You talk about college environments. This is to me the best environment all of college basketball. It's because of the whole scene with the students right on the floor. It's not a very big arena. Everybody can feel the electricity, the emotion. So I say to the Cameron Crazies, this is the America's number one basketball environment. Duke shooting only 27% so far. That'll help as Greg Kubek hits the jumper, 20 to 14. Greg Kubek's had some moments in his career, but as you said earlier, Mike, he came out with a great reputation as a pure shooter. Expectations. That's been the problem with this guy with the rock, King Rice. Everybody expected the next Phil Ford. And even when Kubek misses, he looks good doing it. He's got a great looking shot. Lang gets it off to Palmer. Lang got it back, had it blocked inside. Chilcutt with the defensive play. Here comes Rice. Hubert Davis for three. Fox, offensive rebound. Offensive foul, no basket. There can't be two teams in the country that play each other all the time. They're any better than taking charges than these guys. They really know how to step in and take the charge, Mike. I'm not convinced he got the charge right there. There's the offensive rebound by Rick Place. I'll take that back. Yeah. He definitely did get the offensive charge. He got, charge. got his money's worth. That is the sixth team foul against North Carolina. Duke has committed five, and Dean Smith once again wholesale substitution and the newest face you'll see is number 14 Derek Phelps who's in for the first time that's Montrose who's back in Phelps was highly acclaimed as a defensive player great quickness boy this is the third guy that's been on Hurley they're trying to wear him down he can take it though he's the kind of kid that's got great endurance Kubek missed that one badly foul inside Crawford Palmer pushing off More college basketball coming your way at midnight Eastern. Brigham Young against Wyoming, Wayne Hagen, and Terry Holland. I'll tell you a guy you want to see in that game, Sean Bradley. He's going to rewrite all the record books in shot blocks, the 7-5 or 7-4, whatever he is. He's so big, it's incredible down there at BYU. It's nice to have Terry Holland as part of our crew. We enjoyed him so much for years as the head coach at Virginia, now the athletic director at Davidson. 
Rozier can't get the baseline. Hubert Davis for three. Montross had the rebound, and he is fouled by Christian Leitner. Or is it the other way around? Montross pushed off to get it inside is. offensive positioning. He's got to be a little quicker to the basketball. I really believe that Eric Montross has got to work a lot on jump and roll to get a little bit more agility to his game and be a little quicker to the basketball. Thomas Hill comes back in for Duke, and Rodel is back in for North Carolina. This game has really had some solid defense because of the help defensively, the effort defensively, and the energy that they're expending. It has not been a smooth game offensively. Leitner is shooting 82% from the free throw line, but that only makes him number three on this team. We got some guys with great eyes, and he missed that one. Special situations are so important in a game of basketball. The ability to execute from the free throw line, just like a team in football executing their kicking game. Rozier. That ill advised pass, and Leitner with the interception. Leitner back the other way. Tried to avoid the charge and missed the shot. And he ran into Antonio Lang, who is down and hurt for Duke. Rodel gives it up to Montross, had to double clutch it. And now they will stop the action because Lang is laying on the baseline. Now, the reason they didn't stop it before is that Lang, by laying on the ground, was in no danger. There was nobody around him. Once Duke started coming that way, the official stopped the game. Which was a good decision by the official. Now, he was involved in the on the drive by Leitner. And when there was contact underneath, he flew back from the pack. Watch Le the elbow, left-hand side. Oh. Yeah, he caught an elbow right in the face. From Leitner. His teammate. Leitner made an excellent play there to make the steal and fill the lane and almost had the conversion in transition to show again his multi-talents. The big guy makes the steal on one end of the floor and almost gets the conversion on the other end. And it was great body control to pull up because just as he turned, he saw if he really drove to the bucket, he would uh, commit the offensive foul. Instead, he pulled up and tried to finger roll it in. This guy's more than a basketball player. Antonio Lang was valedictorian of his class, had a 4.0 average. Pretty tough in a classroom as well as on a basketball court. From out of Mobile, Alabama, said no. Came very close to going to LSU or Georgetown. They'll take him to the locker room and attend to him, and you can see that there was some blood from the eye. Hopefully just uh, got caught across the eyebrow. That's the easiest place to get a cut. Gets a nice hand from the Duke students as they have closed the gap to six. 4.25 to go first half. He belongs in college. He made a great move. He's a college coach. And they loved it when he announced the decision. Carolina will spread the offense, play for the last shot. Nobody ran the four quarters better at North Carolina than Mr. Ford. Fox. Missed the shot. Duke with a long shot chance with three seconds left. Not going to bounce to the Blue Devils. And Dean Smith will use that moment to get Montross, his freshman seven-footer, back in the game. This guy doesn't miss anything. Oh, he's on top of everything and in practice. He's right on the scene in practice in every drill. He's a teacher. Hurley trying to beat the clock. Made it close, but no cigar. Not really a well-played half on the offensive end, Mike, but it's the intensity and the defensive effort that prevail, and that's what's going to happen when you have two quality interstate teams going head-to-head. -head. Dick, you're right. If you like defense and intensity, we had it all here at Durham, North Carolina. 28-24, North Carolina over Duke. Stay tuned for our halftime show. presentation of NCAA basketball, North Carolina versus Duke, is brought to you by Dodge for performance, quality, safety, and value. Welcome home, America. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it.
Welcome back to the Tar Heels of North Carolina with a 28 to 24 lead over Duke. The second half still to come, but let's check elsewhere. And we'll start in the ACC, Virginia at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, it's been a tough week. A couple of tough losses in conference facing number 14. This time they got back home, though. Matt Geiger, the big man, the transfer from Auburn inside. Here he follows. The offensive rebound sticks it back in. He had 10 rebounds in the first half. Then Geiger defensive boards up. Kenny Anderson finds him for the jam. Georgia Tech up by 17 at halftime. Second half, same thing. Malcolm Mackey follows his own block shot. Puts it back up. And Georgia Tech rolls over number 14, 78 to 51. Kenny Anderson, 21 points in the game. Seven assists, 17 of those points coming in the second half. Georgia Tech out rebounding the Cavs 52 to 32. Also in the ACC, NC State down by Wake Forest 97 to 76. Rodney Rogers 23 points, 15 rebounds in the game. NC State one of 17 from three point range. Temple and Clemson in a non conference game. The Owls win at 71 to 52. Mark Macon 36 points, eight three pointers in the game. They won a 30 to 7 run in the second half. Maryland in a non conference game facing South Florida on the road and they're losing 58 to 44 is that score let's move it now to the big east pittsburgh ranked number 16 st john's ranked number 10 the ranked teams in the big east st john's at home in jamaica new york and malik seely has been mr everything for st john's this year the law then defensively comes up with a block in the steal louis carnes second likes his junior Pitt from the outside gandy jordan for three then the steal darrell porter comes up with it at the other end and gets the deuce Pitt stays in the game, but St. John's at home, up at halftime by 7, 34-27. A non-conference game, another Biggie school, Villanova at home, DuPont hosting number six, Arizona and the Wildcats. It was a battle of the Wildcats, actually. Chris Mills, three-pointer, the bounce, and it goes in. Then Mark Dowdell, tough basket inside, and he's fouled. Roly Massimino with the applause for that one. Chris Mills with the jumper. Matt Muehlbach finishes it off. Arizona beats Villanova in a game that Nova was in until just about the end. Ludo's reason to smile now. Arizona wins at 72 to 64. Chris Mills, 26 points and nine rebounds in the game. Villanova shooting just 43 percent. In the Big East, Seton Hall, 25 against number eight at Syracuse. And Seton Hall, the Pirates up 33 to 26 at halftime. Also in the Big East, Providence playing in Hartford against Connecticut. Connecticut with 55 points already in the contest, still in the first half. Providence down 55 to 42 at this point. Georgetown on the road at Boston College, down two in a low scoring affair at halftime, 24 to 22. The news in this game is Alonzo Mourning is back in the lineup for the Georgetown Hoyas. He did wind up on the floor in the first half. Stay with us when we come back. We'll take a look at the Big Ten, Indiana and Iowa still to come. Highlights of that game as we continue at halftime in the ACC in a four point contest. Monday comes your way. It'll be our third edition of the year in just a couple of days. And Indiana and Ohio State will be featured in the Big Ten. Indiana in action tonight, ranked number three in the nation, facing Iowa, number 24, though the Hawkeyes coming off a surprising loss to Wisconsin. Calvert Chaney nailed the three-pointer from the right side. Lyndon Jones is back in Bobby Knight's starting lineup. He gets a three as well. Lyndon Jones and finds Damon Bailey, the freshman, pulls up along the baseline, hits the jumper. Dr. Tom Davis trying to fight off a tough week, but they lead in the first half. 37 to 36 is the score. Hoosiers have won 13 straight. Hawkeyes have won 10 straight at home. Something has to give there. It's also in the Big Ten. Ohio State, the Buckeyes up 30 to 27 at home against Illinois at halftime. Best start for the Buckeyes. They right now are 14 and 0 since 62-63. Southwest Conference, SMU down to number two Arkansas. No surprise here, 54-33 at halftime. In the SEC, Vanderbilt beaten by Kentucky this afternoon. Wildcats 6 and 0 in conference. 
but they cannot go to the tournament. They're still on probation, 58 to 50. Jamal Mashburn, outstanding freshman, 17 points there. In the Big Eight, Oklahoma State couldn't hang on against Oklahoma, losing at 76 to 72. Brent Price, 17 points, including three three-pointers. In the SEC again, Mississippi and LSU. LSU up 26 to 18 in the first half. They won 16 straight at home against Ole Miss. Southern Conference, number 15, East Tennessee State over Western Carolina, 93-76. The Bucks are now 14 and 1. Best start in the history of the school. Metro Conference, Memphis State beaten by Southern Miss, 87 to 77. Elliott Perry, 24 points and seven assists in that contest. And Florida State over South Carolina in overtime, 81 to 80 was the final there. Chuck Graham, 17 points. Aubrey Boyd had 16 points. JoJo English, 25, but in the losing cost. Stay with us. Back with more in just a moment. We're at halftime in the ACC in a four-point contest. But right now, we take a look at some more scores on this Saturday night, including Michigan State. It's a known fact. now with 31 consecutive losses at home. Let's continue with another highlight and some scores. Michigan and Wisconsin, this side of the Big Ten. Michigan and Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin is a surprising team this past week. Michigan, a bit of a down year, but Tony Tolbert, eight seconds left, pulls, nails a 15-footer, 69-68 Wolverines. Tolbert thought he had won the game, but a foul was called on teammate Michael Talley. Two free throws for Wisconsin. Larry Eisel missed the first. They tried the game. This is the second chance to send the game to double overtime, and the Wolverines win it. 69 to 68 is the final, overcoming a 14 point halftime deficit. Michael Talley with 18 points in the game. A reminder still one more game to come here on ESPN later tonight, following Sports Center at midnight Eastern Time. We'll go to the WAC. BYU will face Wyoming. Sean Bradley, the outstanding rookie center big guy at 7-6 for BYU you want to have a chance to see him play so stay with us there's still more to come we're at halftime in the ACC four-point lead for the Tar Heels ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball North Carolina versus Duke is brought to you by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. We're at halftime in Durham, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels lead the Blue Devils 28-24. Keep in mind that these are both teams that average more than 91 points a game. So we have had some defense. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale. Glad you could join us tonight. We set it up at the beginning by saying it would be a, a great battle to watch between King Rice and Bobby Hurley. Well, they really went at each other in terms on the defensive end. Both have made some major mistakes offensively. King Rice really set the offense up. He had some great looks. There's one great look. He had four assists, no turnovers in the first half. That's the chill cut on a back screen. King Rice in his last. Forget about the number of points, two points. He's the leader. He wants to play on the defensive end as well. On the other side when we talk about Duke Duke has a little simple message it says let's come off the bench for a tremendous lift Thomas Hill has 15 points tonight inside outside he's hit some perimeter shots knocked down a three has really run the court exceptionally well Chilcutt and Laker, what a matchup, and Chilcutt lost it this time. A 
I'll tell you, life in the ACC can be wacky. Duke gets blown out by Virginia by 17. They blow away Georgia Tech by 40. And today, Georgia Tech blows Virginia away. Oh, there's the trap. Just post somebody up. Look for the diagonal. Boy, good job by Hurley. He just called timeout and said, see you later. Good timeout, but that's not where he wants to bring the basketball against the trap. 9-12 to go in the game. Duke 49, North Carolina 42. On guard for ACC Big East Wednesday, Duke's Bobby Hurley meets NC State's fire and ice combo of Corsi I and Monroe. Then Pitt tries to stop Eric Murdoch of Providence. Wednesday night, live on ESPN. McCaffrey does a great drill. Mr. Hill's been so productive off the bench. Hill leads Duke with 15. Leitner has 13. Only one player in double figures for North Carolina, and that's Chilcutt. He has 14 tonight. And Duke will have to use another timeout because they can't get the ball in. And Mike Krzyzewski is boiling. I don't blame him. 9-12 to go. 49-42 will be back in a moment. 1985. 86, 87, 88, 89. For six straight Nine. years, the full-size pickup from GMC Truck has retained more of its original value than any other in America. That's why sales of the Sierra are growing faster than any other full-size pickup. And we intend to keep it that way in 1991 with these new Sierras. And in 92, GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. It's quality on the road. Why does a man have to do what a man has to do? Two, three, four. Try Bud Dry. Cold filtered for smooth draft taste. Dry brewed for no aftertaste. Refreshing proof that men still know what they're doing. The Adenorex side really feels like it's doing a lot more than the head and shoulders side. It feels real cool and tingly over here. Both have a dandruff ingredient, but Denorex adds an extra anti-itch medicine you can feel working. The tingle told me that Denorex was doing more for my hair. It's powerful. It's 110% protection. Speed Stick deodorant. Made just for a man. It has no alcohol to evaporate. Its protection doesn't fade. Speed Stick. 110% protection. By men. Minutes, 12 seconds to play from Durham, North Carolina. Duke up by seven. And Duke ball. They only have one timeout left. They have squandered a pair back to back. Hurley just inside the three point line. Leitner kept it alive and Hurley got it. Leitner with those long arms. One timeout, Dick, is not the situation a coach wants with nine minutes to go in the game. Especially a big-time major college basketball team that can't put the ball in play from the sideline or baseline. That's a no-no. And Duke making North Carolina spread its defense. They're going to look for the high percentage shot. Use some of the shot clock. This is not a stall. A McCaffrey comes out. Fox trying to deny Hurley the ball. It's a size mismatch right there. Shot clock and Hurley forced by Fox with some excellent defense to do what he didn't want to do. He had turned 10 turnovers last year in the first meeting against North Carolina. Tonight he has nine turnovers. As you saw some Big East scores passed your way. He's too good a player when we speak about Bob Hurley to turn the ball over as often as he does. Well, I think King Rice has... Uh, was detailed by both players earlier, really gets his juices flowing. 8.25 left in the game. Kubek will come out. Antonio Lang is back in. They trade experience for athletic ability. More size inside. And Carolina. look at all the substitutions both coaches have made. And we still have 8.17 to go. That's only 62 between them. That's right. Chill cut guarded by Lake. We're less Rozier. We're less Robinson down in North Carolina State. He can't make any substitutions. Rozier with a backdoor pass. Fox for three. Carolina will come out with a chill.
Shokut chased it down in the corner, but then they throw it away. Dick, you just get that feeling that Fox or somebody from North Carolina is going to catch the hot hand, but it hasn't happened yet. Dean Smith's certainly hoping for it to happen. Rogier is capable of giving him good offensive productivity. This is a big game. These are the top two teams in the conference. You must win at home. So it's bigger for Duke to win tonight than it is North Carolina. Who are the better teams in America? Oh, Lang with a little single reverse gets mugged inside. He's got to blow the whistle. Rozier, Rozier is called for his fourth foul. The toughest adjustment for young people like Rozier coming into major college is playing defense man-to-man -man along that baseline. Lynch will come back in. Rozier will go out with his fourth foul. Lynch has four. Oh, look, look. He's hugging him. He's hugging him. He's hooking him. You can't do that, Clifford. 7.38 left. Put it down. This kid is going to be an excellent player at North Carolina. Mike Krzyzewski says... Dick, I really believe he's going to become one of their outstanding front court players. Lang, first trip to the free throw line, he shoots under 50%. That's his fifth point on the night, and a big one because he gives Duke an eight-point lead. First time I ever met Antonio Lang, I was preparing for a game, and I was sitting in Dale Brown's office at LSU, and he walked in with his dad. And let me tell you something. I heard about his transcript, 4.0 valedictorian. I said, wow. Now, the rest of the story is he saw you with Dale Brown and decided to come, come here, right? 51-42. Oh. <laughs> the biggest lead of the game. Duke up by nine, seven and a half minutes left. Fox tries to get it inside. Kubek has played some outstanding defense tonight. The Duke team defense has really done an excellent job. Right there is one of the phases of their defense. Beat the cutter to the ball. Four basic principles taken from the Bobby Knight system. Pressure the ball, deny on the wing, beat the cutter to the ball, a block out. Boy, another hustling play this time by McCaffrey. And Dick, if memory serves correct, when Kubek played earlier in his career, he was not being put in the lineup for defense, but he's come through for them this season. Yeah, he really has. He was put in the lineup earlier in the career for shooting ability. She'll cut way outside as they start the offense. Well, they pride themselves on good man defense. Lynch. Boy, every pass is a contest. Fox for three, won't go. And another rebound for Christian Leitner. Christian Leitner is so quick to the basketball. He anticipates exceptionally well. That is 11 rebounds for the big junior out of Angola, New York. Backdoor cut, they miss Hurley, he was wide Go open, back. wide open! Six for Kubek, and the lead has grown to 11. Kubek hits the J, Mike, but he had Hurley wide open. Dean's got to be concerned. Coach Guthridge sitting to his right. He'd like to substitute to put the guy behind him in the game by the name of Mr. Ford, Philip Ford. Both teams have been told they cannot touch the ball after it goes through the basket. It's a delay of game call. That's a Here's Phil Ford. Well, when he ran the four corners, you could forget it. You never got the ball back. Hey, I waved the handkerchief when we played against him at Detroit. As soon as they got the lead and gave him the rock, we put the white hanky up. Carolina needs a basket here very badly. But it's tough to decide who to go to. Nobody's been hot. Nobody's done anything except Chilcutt. Hill gets caught for holding on to Fox defensively. That's one foul for Thomas Hill. Here's some other scores. Indiana leading Iowa. That's with 13 minutes to go. And that's at Iowa. And Ohio State on top of Illinois by 19. That would set up our big Monday confrontation between Ohio State and Indiana at Bloomington. I'll tell you, Bloomington, Indiana is always a special place to be as well. You see all the red, and then when night walks in, it's like their hero, and a place just erupts. Columbus is another special place. Have you, you ever done a game in Missouri or Texas, South Carolina? South Carolina, yes. I've never done a game in any of those places. Missouri I'm, and Texas, I have not. I'd love to go to those three environments for a game. I heard they're really special. Fox, nine points on the night. The lead is cut to ten. Every possession will become very important now for North Carolina. North Carolina will probably go into a trap right now after the score. Fox hits them both, and Reese will check back in. Fox will get a rest. But Reese in with the fresh legs, very athletic, tremendous leaper. 
Chilcutt inbounds to Grand Hill, and they find Hurley. 6.33 to go. He's going to try to invite him to a trap. Here comes the run and jump. See, they got to post somebody to the middle of the floor. Grand Hill with that cross-court pass. Hill, Thomas Hill, that is. What a pass to Leitner! That's the best pass Hurley's made all night. They really look for each other. A good basketball team controls their emotions at the end of the game. Whether it be football, basketball, you have to play in a situation where you have poise. Duke did have the basketball, Mike, but now they get two opportunities plus the basketball. 2.13 left, an eight-point lead. And Thomas Hill will go to the line. They called the They're foul still on going at Fox. It. Yes, they are. They got to get them away from each other. A lot of guys talking to each other. I'd simply walk in. If I was blowing a whistle right now, I'd love to rep. I'd say, look, you guys, I'm going to oh. tell you one quick one. I mean, they hit you with a tee so quick, you're not going to believe it. Hill was fouled by Fox, his fourth, give him 16 points. The lead is up to nine. If you referee games, they go four hours. Hey, maybe Freddie Barakat will call me up. He does the greatest job in terms of evaluating his officials as the head of the officials in the ACC. Hill has hit five of six from the line. Now five of seven, the lead nine points. And now McCaffrey will shoot the technical. It's two shots. And why not? He's only a 90% free throw shooter. He gets two attempts. I think, I remember when I was coaching, Mike, an official sets the tone. If he lets you know quickly, I'm not going to tolerate it, you know you back off. Of course, there is such an intensity between these teams and these players. They go after each other all the time. 65-54, and to make it worse, it's Duke's ball. Yeah, they get possession of the ball. You know, the intensity starts before the game ever starts. It starts in a parking lot. It starts in a warm-ups with the crowd. Leitner chased by Sullivan. They go to the double team. He'll bring it back out. He'll spread the court. They just want the clock to run here. Thomas Hill goes for the bucket and makes it. He doesn't want the clock to run. He feels a 20-point night. He, uh, he has 18 points tonight. The lead at 13. Fox for three. Oh, what a game he has played. Kubek. Thomas Hill knows he's the BMOC. Big man on campus. Hurley fouled by Hubert Davis with a minute 40 to go. Bob Hurley cheering on with the crowd. The crowd loves it. The camera crazy. He's erupt, baby. And if this score stands, Duke would be 4-1 and one in the ACC. North Carolina would be 2-1. That's what they are right now. Duke would go to 4-1. and one. North Carolina would drop to 2-1. and one. And North Carolina State would be in a three-way tie in the loss count. They're going to make that game up on February 7th with North Carolina State. Play back-to-back -back against each other. I'll tell you what, who do you oh, think that tough. favors? Well, North, North Carolina State, you know, with uh, five, five six guys who can play, makes it very difficult for them. They better win that first game before they go to Chapel Hill for game two because they're playing back-to-back. -back. Hurley with a missed free throw. He's four out of five from the line. Missed again. 13-point lead, 137 to go. Don't let him Davis for three. And North Carolina will spend a timeout as they've cut the lead to 10. We have seen this so many times before. Carolina, apparently done, has come back, so hang on. Basically, trucks are used for two reasons, hauling and towing. And for that, you need power. And the Sierra from GMC Truck has the most standard horsepower in its class, which gives you the hauling and towing strength you need. Plus, for six straight years, the full-size pickup from GMC Truck has retained more of its original value than any other in America. Sierra. Powerful and durable. GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. It's quality on the road. This is...
is not what you want in a shave. Now, you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. One minute, 31 seconds to play in Durham, North Carolina. It is Duke by 10. So many times we hear the term, as we look at the timeout situation, fouls to give, you can see that on the screen. But we talk so much about defense, and it was epitomized here tonight. Duke was struggling, shooting 27% in the first half for most of it. But they kept digging in defensively, and they hung and they hung and they hung until they put together a run by Hill. Well, it, it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. Coaches tell you, defense is something you can play every night. Oscar Robertson used to say that in Jerry West when the two guys played. And so we may have bad nights shooting the ball, but we're going to guard people as well. And those guys didn't have too many bad nights either. <laughs> Inbounds to Hurley. They try to draw the foul, and Hubert Davis will get the block instead. His third. Keep you up to date on some other scores. Syracuse has won, as has St. John's by two at home against Pitt. Malik Sealy, what a year he is having. Hey, you know, you mentioned West, you mentioned Robertson. Tell MC Hammer to move over. I'm coming into the screen now, and I'm going to do a video. And I got my all Rolls Royce team. I want you to try and pick it one day. I'm not going to let you pick it tonight. The 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, and then ultimately my solid gold all Rolls Royce team. Hurley hits the free throw at 68-57. Duke now by 11 with a minute 30 left. It was a lot of fun to do, Mike. It really was. I had so much fun doing it. 69-57. Get the bus, Dean. There's no way you're pulling magic getting this one out. Load the bus. Head to Chapel Hill. This baby belongs to the Blue Devils. Hubert Davis misses the three. The rebound to Leitner, and he's fouled and comes up limping. Chapel Hill is just a Taj Mahal when you go in that place in terms of blue heaven, the beautiful seats, the color scheme. But there's something special about a smaller environment. I would love to see in the Chapel Hill let those students get a little closer to the sideline. Leitner with 16 points. He just keeps getting better and better as a player. He's becoming more and more a complete player, very confident. Make sure he gets some size to help him with their recruits coming in. Cherokee Parks will be an instant player. 6'11 from California. The lead is 14. North Carolina won both games last year, so it's payback time. Rice against Hurley. Rick Fox with a runner. Nice cut by Fox without the basketball. And North Carolina will use a timeout. Coming up later tonight, Brigham Young against Wyoming. That's a midnight start. Wayne Hagan and Terry Holland will be along to bring you that ball game. Basically, the timeout right now, as you look at, you mentioned Terry Holland. As you said, so great to have Terry join us. A class act. Wyoming's been a real surprise team. They lost the puck with the Utah. But you know, in the last two minutes, I'd like to see the NBA rule where the clock stops to eliminate the calling of timeouts by the coaches when they're down just to stop the clock. Nick, some revenge for the Blue Devils, who last year lost both meetings against the Tar Heels. It ends an 11-game winning streak for North Carolina, and that's now five in a row for Duke. We want to remind you that following Sports Center at 11:30 Eastern Time, we'll come back at midnight with our third and final game here. Sean Bradley, the 7'6 freshman for the Cougars of BYU, they'll face Wyoming in the Western Athletic Conference. That one comes your way at midnight Eastern Time. So we'll be back then. As for now, thanks for enjoying the A. CC game here on ESPN's NCAA basketball. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, North Carolina versus Duke, is brought to you by EDS. 
the world's most experienced computing and communication services company. Take advantage of change with EDS. By GMC Truck, it's not just a truck anymore. And by Edge Shaving Gel, for less irritation, you've got the edge.